Large track counts can sometimes be difficult to manage, so let's create some subgroups to break this down a bit. I'm going to create an AUX track by going to Track, New. We'll create a Stereo AUX input, and let's call it Drums in capitals to denote that it's a subgroup. I'll move the drum AUX next to the drum tracks, and we need to select an input for it. We go to the Input Selector, choose from the Bus menu, and Unused Bus, number 1 and 2. Then our drum tracks will go one by one and select the output, go to bus, and there's bus one and two. That takes a while, so let's do all of them in one go. We'll select all our drum tracks, hold in shift and alt on your keyboard, and I'll go to the output selector, bus one and two. And now all of them are routed through bus one and two, and we have one, one fader to control our entire drum kit. Let's do the same thing with our other groups of instruments. I've got guitar, keys, organ, and bass. The bass is just one fader, I'll leave that one on its own. But these three I'm going to group together into an instruments subgroup. So I'm going to create the same thing. New track, I'll make it a stereo, aux, and I'll call it instruments. And again, I select all three of those tracks, uh, hold in shift alt, go to the output selector, bus three and four. And then on the instruments aux, I'll just choose bus three and four as its input. Now we need to remember the names of the buses, so maybe it's easier to rename these. On the Instruments one, I'll right-click on it, rename, and say Instruments. I'll just name it the same as the AUX that it's going into. And the same thing with the drums. Right-click on bus one and two, rename, and call it Drums. So now on that bus list, it's easier to see what's what. For the vocals and the backing vocals, there's actually a shortcut. So I'm going to go New AUX, I'll use the shortcut this time. Stereo AUX track, I'll call it maybe LV for lead vocals. But instead of setting up the buses here, I'm just going to select all of these tracks, Shift Alt again, but this time under the output, instead of going to bus, I'm going to go to track and look for that LV track. It doesn't have an input, so it's created a new bus named LV and done all the routing for me. That's quite a significant uh, saving in time. You can even skip creating the, the AUX track by selecting, let's say, the backing vocals, going, holding Shift-Alt again for due to selected. I'll go to the output menu, and instead of going to track, I'm going to say New Track. And this will create a new stereo AUX named BV for backing vocals. It's routed all my tracks into the BV bus, and it's set up the BV bus as the input to this track. I'll just move it next to my buses over here. So now I have a subgroup for the drums. The bass guitar is on its own. Instruments track are going to their own bus. LV is going to its own bus and the BV. So let's take all of those tracks this time. I'm going to select BV, hold in command, LV, instruments, bass, and drums. And I'm going to send those all into a mix bus. So shift alt, go to the last one, go to new track, stereo, aux, I'm just going to call it mix. And again, each of those tracks has now been routed into a new bus labeled mix. And the mix aux here at the end has its input coming from the mix bus. So now all my tracks are feeding through these various different auxiliaries and I have what's essentially a master mix control here, which I can add processing to. One of the complications of aux tracks in Pro Tools is that it's difficult to solo just one track at a time. If I want to solo the snare drum, it means that I, I won't hear that on its own until I also solo the drummer's bus that it's rooted into and the whole mix bus that it's rooted into. To get around this, we use a function called solo defeat, which means that it disables the muting function when another track is soloed. So I hold in the command key and I click on the S and you'll see that it has grayed out the S now and the mute button is no longer in, engaged. I'll also do the same thing on the mix bus, hold in command, click on the S, and now I can hear just the snare on its own, or any one of the other drums. I'll do the same thing with the other subgroups. Command S on the solo keys on each one of those, and now my auxiliaries are always listening to what's coming in, no matter what track is soloed. Of course, this could present a problem if you wanted to hear the whole drum kit. In that case, I'll enable my groups on the left-hand side over here, and I already have a drum group for my drum tracks, and I can solo the whole drum group at once like that. One of the newer features of Pro Tools is the addition of folder tracks, which replaces AUX tracks in the role of subgroups. So I'm going to get rid of this AUX track, 
and I'll take my drums and just put them back into the stereo mix. Next, with my drums selected, I right click on them, go to move to new folder. I want it to be a stereo routing folder and I want root tracks to new folder selected. I'll also call this folder drums. Now my tracks have all been added into this blue folder and I can fold and unfold my folder very easily or use shift F. On top of that, if I solo individual tracks, the folder doesn't get muted or I can solo the folder and I hear all the tracks inside, which is very, very handy. In the edit window, the folders are very helpful because they organize your track a whole lot neater and you can fold and unfold different sections of your mix much quicker. You can even perform some basic editing in your folder layer.